paniculectomy is. What is a paniculectomy? I'm going to be reacting to one of my videos that we recently posted. Just wanted to show you some of the work we do here for removal of excess skin. In this case, typically patients that have lost a lot of weight and they have this abdominal panis. And you may ask yourself, well, what is a panis? And a panis is any area that hangs over its natural borders and encroaches on a neighboring anatomical part. Typically that's the abdomen. So it's typically it's, it's an abdominal panis that we're talking about. A piece of excess skin and fat of the lower abdomen that hangs over the pubic region, sometimes hangs over the thighs, sometimes even goes all the way down to the knees, just depending on the patient. But technically a panis can occur anywhere else in the body. It can occur on the chest, it can occur in the arms, it can occur on the uh, face, the neck, but uh, usually when we're talking about a panis, it's the abdominal panis. So this is an abdominal panis before and after. That's his belly button. The first and there is the before. Said, We're going to send you to the emergency room. And the emergency room doctor said put a warm compress on it, gave me an antibiotic. And so it's grown to the size where it started crossing to the left. So you can see it's right. all it's past his knees. So for me, what I would suggest we do Pretty large, is just huh? eliminate the problem. We'll do the insertion, we'll take that off, we'll just kind of kind of come in here you know, and take care of this problem. And that's a paniculectomy, not necessarily a tummy tuck. Excited, nervous, anxious, a whole rave of emotions. Today's the day, thank God. So I think uh, this will be very beneficial for you. Uh, we'll get rid of a lot of this excess skin and fat. Now the backstory on this guy is uh, he had seen many doctors, like probably about a dozen doctors, and they said, oh, it's too complicated a surgery. His insurance actually denied the surgery a couple of times. Um, they said that it would be uh, too much blood loss. Uh, they said it's a tumor. We don't know how to resect it. They said lose more weight. So all these excuses, and when I saw him, I'm like, you need a paniculectomy. And uh, we got it scheduled, and we probably scheduled it within about three or four weeks of initially seeing him. This hindrance in front of you. So this is him before the surgery. And just things you would take that we take for granted that people without a pass just we take for granted. And by getting rid of this, I think uh, we'll be much, much better off. So today we have a wonderful patient in his mid-50s from Vegas. Vegas, and he has an abdominal pants. Now this pants is causing him all kinds of problems. The pants Can't even is see his knees. It leaks uh, pus, and it's causing him all kinds of problems in terms of mobility and... So in the lower portion of his abdominal pants here, all that blood would go down, get trapped, uh, would very have a very difficult time getting back into the circulation and back to his heart and would cause these chronic skin conditions, uh, inflammation and even abscesses and infections on the lower portion here. And ability to exercise. So today what we're going to be doing is called a paniculectomy, getting rid of I mean, just panis. think how hard getting out of bed was so for him. Much goes across the butt line here and gets rid of this pass. We're not going to really be messing with the belly button. We're not going to be reconstructing the anterior abdominal wall with the muscle plication. We're just going to be getting rid of the pass. And hopefully that will relieve him a lot of his symptoms in terms of the infection inside the pass, a lot of the problems with the ambulation, back pain, and you can imagine the rest. So it's going to be operating. I'm going to show you how we do it. And it like and uh, I mean, just imagine how difficult it was for him to get out of bed. You can see that the pannus pretty much completely covers his upper thigh and goes all the way down to his knee. You can see the discoloration from the white portion to this uh, darkened uh, red portion. On a middle-aged male. We're getting started here. This gentleman's in his mid-50s, morbidly obese, but uh, he doesn't want to have the gastric bypass procedure for a multitude of reasons. He tried losing the weight, but this abdominal pannus just keeps getting in the way. You can imagine how difficult it is in general. Can you imagine how difficult it is to exercise or try to lose weight with this pannus? So we are in a situation where we just have to get rid of the pannus here. One of the problems is this area of skin becomes so dependent. It's so far down, almost close. So even if he was on Ozempic, even if he was on uh, gastric bypass or had a gastric bypass, Rue and Y, vertical gastric sleeve, balloon, whatever, he would still have a lot of excess skin and fat. So even if you have those surgeries or taking those medications, he would still probably need this paniculectomy. Um, someone's Apple. asking a question. Runs yeah. So they're asking, how do you control blood loss? Well, you'll see. This instrument that I have in my hand right here, it's so called electrocautery. Um, uh, conducts uh, electricity, and when I touch the uh, blood vessel with the cautery, it burns uh, the blood vessel and stops the bleeding. 
vascular, it runs out of blood, runs out of oxygen, so the skin dies and very prone to infection. So those are the uh, indurated area. That's the bottom of the panis that I removed, the bottom of the skin. And you'll see that here in a minute. Skin from sort of table to table here. I've already injected some lidocaine, minimized the bleeding. Now because this patient's panis was so big, I sort of did a reverse paniculectomy by making the incision underneath the belly button and coming down on it. Usually you see me going underneath the panis and coming up and on top of it. But it was just so big I had to go straight down. From underneath and we dissect up. So, and now we're dissecting underneath from the pubic region up so towards the head. Go from the top down. And this is how we control the bleeding. Just meticulously takes a long time, but uh, we cauterize or burn all these little tiny blood vessels. I started working out seven days a week, and it was. And you like can see the field is not that bloody. And then when this, ma as I was losing the weight, and this mass came to flourishing, that I just what thought was a pocket of fat, right? And I started losing function quickly. I, I don't think it was ever an option for me to give up, yeah. but I'm not going to lie. So here I'm measuring it with towel clamps. I've made my upper incision, I made my lower incision, and I measured the uh, tension in the flap with these towel clamps. I pull them together to make sure I can uh, remove it safely and then, more importantly, maybe getting it all back together. That I think I was damn close, you know what I mean? Because I was losing my mind and it was starting to really show. Now, I'd use my towel clamps to measure what I could put back together, and now I'm just easily putting them back together as a temporary, and then I'm going to place a whole bunch of sutures deep, middle, superficial. See how it just comes together very naturally? Now, to get to the whole thing, I'm splitting the specimen in half so we can open it up like a book. Getting it a little bit more sterile with some more betadine there. Now I'm taking out the right side of the panis. I took out the left side. And basically I've used my towel clamps here and there to reapproximate it. I'm sure I can get this out. And then I cut the specimen. And for orientation, his head's up there. Now we're lifting up the panis, coming underneath the thing. Underneath the flap here, we've already made our upper incision. Mapped out so pubic region is here, here, legs are legs. But, uh, just to be safe with this kind of panis. Uh, Pretty large, huh? The top down method. Now I'm just coming underneath it from the uh, bottom approach. And it's almost released here. The last little fibers. There, the final cut. Boom, now it's free. Now this is the uh, specimen you can see there. Requires about two people to pick it up. I'm going to take out this little area of fat or the size of like a football ear in the pubic region. We usually don't do that, but it's right there. It'll make the appearance of the uh, pubic region just so much better for him and easier for him. So I think we'll just go ahead and do that for him here. Yeah. So he may have not even noticed that pouch of excess fat in the pubic region because the tummy was hanging over it. But I excised this uh, quite large area of fat just in the pubic region. That's behind the skin. Those are my drains, those little white guys. Those go in the side, another side. And now getting rid of a little bit of excess skin. I think I can get rid of some more in the pubic region. That's probably because I took out that extra fat in the pubic region. Get rid of that and then uh, put it all back together. There we go. And before, and then, ta-da, afterwards. There's his belly button down to the pubic region, hip to hip. Are we done 
and uh, his head's over here. From the front side, Peter Dillon. Dissect down to the back of the flap, and then come underneath it and cut it from the uh, underside. So there's so his profile. The pubic region up, I reduced it and got rid of that extremely large panis that was hanging down to here. It's on the back table now. This is all the induration, the tummy skin. And that's the, the specimen on the back side. You can see it's. Uh, uh, we cut into it. Oh. You can see it's discolored. Uh, because of the uh, blood flow going into that area getting trapped, staining the skin, causing these chronic infections, and actually the color of the skin changes. Of this blood that was in the flat, trapped in the flat. And we'll try to get And again, this is on the back table. This is not part of the patient anymore. And we're just showing you the, uh, what the panis looks like in, in the skin. Complaining of these ulcers. So you can see all this white out here. You can see all this white in here. The white is not normal. Scar tissue. The white is scar tissue due to chronic inflammation and blood flow problems. So it makes all this scar tissue so the tummy doesn't touch the floor. So it makes all this really thick scar tissue to hold itself up. And all this is just solid scar tissue. So we have about uh, 72 pounds here. So, so 72 pounds. Uh, Imagine uh, losing 72 pounds and in about six hours. So we're just going to get 12, out into recovery room. 12 pounds an hour. Before, after. So all that excess skin and fat way below his knees now gone. He can see his knees. He can see his thighs. We had a patient yesterday that I uh, consulted with. She had a paniculectomy. And she's like, yeah, it's great. But my thighs, what about my thighs? He couldn't even see his thighs before, and now he can see his thighs, and maybe now the thighs bother him because now he can see it. So, you know, got one, one thing at a time. And then pause it there, Dr. Katzen. Okay. So this part you haven't seen before, but this is actually him doing some testimonials. Okay. Just All right. watch it, let us listen to it, and react to it in between. Okay, so sounds good. So this is the uh, patient testimonials. When you're ready, just end up okay. 16 hours after surgery. So these are some of my wonderful nurses at the recovery center. And my uh, physician assistant. Mm -hmm. Feels different, huh? Oh, I'm used to being pulled forward, yeah, right? So, uh, exactly. yeah. yeah, it feels weird. So again, he had 72 pounds dragging him forward. Now he has to get... Yes. Like, I, I kid you not, I'm so used to stuff hitting my knees that my knees and my legs want to go... They want to shoot, you yeah. know what I mean? Pushing all that yeah. 72 pounds. So he has to relearn how to walk here. I'm not used to having uh, nothing up in there. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's great. I just want break dancing before the yeah. yeah. He said he wants to break dance. I'm so excited for you. Not yet. Yeah. shorts again. Yeah. I'm wearing shorts because I was hanging out the bottom of my shorts below the knee. Cool. I feel great. You guys have been awesome. Just very informative for the whole process and just feeling just great. Amazed that this is just gone. The pain before the surgery was at least a seven with bouts of ten, almost like a burning cigarette feeling on every abscess and just shooting pains through the day. And um, since it's been removed, maybe three, four, maybe. So that's why even the pain levels, like I'm hurting, but compared to where I was, this is a walk on the beach, like literally. Just the So that's interesting. Before pre-op, he was having a lot, a lot of pain. After the surgery, he has some pain, but it's much, much less. So you'd think these kinds of surgeries would elicit, cause more pain, but actually surgeries like this, the paniculectomy, breast reductions, things like that, actually reduce a lot of the pain, even immediately post-op, the day after surgery. Without having that pressure and everything, it's just all these different symptoms that were adding to that pain discomfort level of a seven. Just, yeah, this pain I'm feeling now is no more than I did too much yard work or something, or, you know, strained myself at the gym or something like that. But, uh, so we get a lot of comments on our videos. Oh, the pain must be intense. So it must be terrible, blah, blah, blah. I can't imagine the exquisite pain. This patient from this very large surgery relates it to doing too much yard work. His words. And this was only 16 Huge. hours after surgery. And this is only 16 hours after surgery. So, you know, uh, it's painful, yes, but not extreme as you would ex expect. You also got some messages from fans like here. Someone okay. said, amazing, thank you, Riri. 
Uh, oh, thank Tora you. Rock said good stuff. I wish him the best. Great, Someone thank you. Said, thank you for sharing. Sure, absolutely. And you can watch this on YouTube. It's posted. You could watch it at uh, your leisure. It's a really cool, interesting video. Get a U-turn. I'm heading in the right direction now. Being afraid to go over someone's house to visit because I'm afraid that the abscess would break on their couch or while I was over there. I had a mess to deal with. So, to me, a true doctor, not what we have out there in society today. He's one of those far and few between doctors that you're lucky to ever meet that actually care. His bedside manner is perfection. Oh, thank you, you very much. You don't find that in doctoring today. You find people treating you like I was treated for a year and a half by all these doctors in Vegas, like literally like a piece of meat, like just another copay, another deductible. Definitely one of the oh, that's terrible. doctors I've ever met in my life, for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it feels really appreciate stand. that. It doesn't, like before, I didn't want to stand. I didn't want to sit. I didn't want to lay down. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to go to sleep, really. And, and, and now, yeah, get up and move around a little bit and sit in a vehicle without feeling like I'm completely crushed is a whole nother experience. The spine will go down. The pain should get less. Uh, we got rid of 75% of the drains. We got rid of three of the four drains. So in about a week, we'll get rid of the last drain. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Sure, my pleasure. Okay, Thank buddy. You. Thank you. Okay, sure, my pleasure. Nice seeing you. Basically, the scar looks very good. Here's the belly button. There's our incision line from hip to hip. Looks very clean. Uh, for extra support, I decided to put an extra layer of safety called staples, surgical staples, stainless steel. So I think uh, all this looks really good. No infection. Uh, no evidence of any breakdown, no leakage, nothing like that. Probably I anticipate getting you back to activity of daily living, let's say, probably a little bit more and more every day, okay? And then hopefully back to some exercise uh, in like maybe two, three, four weeks. So we'll see you virtually in about a week, and we'll see you physically in about four to six weeks. Okay, that's okay. Okay? Yep. Yeah, all right, my friend. Awesome. Hey, what's going on? How's it going? How you so I went back to Vegas and then uh, came back to our office here, Beverly Hills. Good to see you. Hey, Good to see you too. Doing okay. I'm going into just about two months after surgery. Um, doing good. The mass that was removed weighed 72 pounds. 72. Um, I had to relearn how to walk again. It's still there in my mind. Uh -huh. So I got to remind myself I don't have the limitations. Yeah. It's weird, the, the, the little things that you miss. Like I sat down for a little lunch to overlook the ocean. With the size of a mass, I couldn't do that. I always had to sit backwards. So it was really weird sitting at the table and with my daughter and stuff. Pretty cool. It's the little things that we take for granted, people without a panis, that uh, people with a panis just have to live with and suffer with. So have a paniculectomy, get rid of the panis, and then uh, you can enjoy a lot of these little things. Moments that you can't put a price tag on. It's been great, and I think part of it is too, the follow-up with Dr. Katzen's office reassures you that you're just not kicked out the door. I think I called Dr. Katzen was a Sunday and he actually called me back, which was really impressive. Of course. Everything <laughs> is astronomically easier, I guess, is the best way to put it. You guys are awesome. Yay. So cool video. Uh, Pinnick, you like to me. And Good. Pause that right there. Sure. And a couple of questions. Sure. So some people don't understand the difference between a tummy tuck and a paniculectomy. So paniculectomy is removal of a panis. A panis is that excess skin and fat of the lower abdomen. So excess skin and fat of the lower abdomen would, during the paniculectomy, we just cut it off. We just chop it off. We chop off the skin, the fat, stitch it back together. That's it. Now tummy tuck is more than that. It's chopping off that skin and then dissecting up to the belly button, dissecting clear up to the sternum, uh, the uh, rib cage here where your heart is, dissecting out the lateral borders of the ribs. So it's dissecting out about like a good uh, maybe eight to 10 inches upward of that incision. Next thing we do is also we placate the six pack muscle. So we do muscle work. Step number three, we unbutton the belly button push it in, and then we pull out more skin than we would with a paniculectomy. So typically we'd get out the skin that goes all the way up to the uh, belly button and take all that skin out. So, and then we stitch it all back together. So paniculectomy is removal of excess skin and fat from 
pretty much below the pubic region, a tummy tuck is removal of that skin and more skin and repair of the muscle and uh, recreation of the belly button. So it's a bigger procedure, the tummy tuck. Would you say the tummy tuck is the more aesthetic procedure? Yeah, the tummy tuck is the more aesthetic procedure. Now this uh, gentleman ideally uh, needs to lose more weight before he has a definitive tummy tuck. And occasionally we have those patients who are too, um, have, have a panis that's too big uh, to undergo a tummy tuck initially. So we do the paniculectomy first, maybe then they have the gastric bypass, lose more weight, and then re uh, represent for a tummy tuck. So Dr. Captain, that was your first time hearing his testimonial. What yeah. do you think of that? Oh, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. And uh, I'm so glad this patient now can uh, do the things maybe he couldn't do before and really have a more full life with uh, his family, uh, especially his daughter. Have you caught up with him recently? Uh, I've seen him, I guess, about uh, six months ago. Very, very happy, a sort of a new chapter in his life. And uh, he's losing more weight, is exercising. Uh, so uh, he continues on his weight loss journey. One cool thing that he told me as well is that he had to get a new car because his, you want to talk about that? Uh, you, you, you tell the story. I yeah, think you know so it better. He had to get a new car because his previous car was custom made for his pants to fit on the floor so he could drive with it there because it was getting in the way of the steering wheel. Now he has a regular car. Isn't that crazy? So these things that we take for granted, like if you have a panis, how are you going to drive? Well, that 72 pound mass was sort of sitting in his lap in the car, in the step well. And when that's there, how do you reach the steering wheel? So I guess he had a custom car uh, to accommodate that. And once we got rid of that 72 pounds, he had to get a new car. So kind of crazy. So, you know, one thing leads to another. And then when you get rid of the panis, it opens up a whole new set of doors. Ha huh? get it? Car yeah, doors. Car uh, doors. Uh, Riri said you drastically improved his quality of life. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you shouldn't have to suffer with these uh, large abdominal masses. You know, seek a professional. Then this patient had been knocking on doctor's doors for about a year and a half before he found a definitive answer. So if you don't get the answers you're specifically looking for, keep on knocking, keep on asking, keep on inquiring. So if you have a panis, uh, Seek a seek an expert. Maybe give me a call. Someone thought your pun was funny. <laughs> yeah, I see. I they, I am funny. Yes. Uh, plastic surgery said Dr. Katzen changes people's lives every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of great comments on the YouTube video. People saying that they're so happy for this guy. Someone else said that they're really um, they like that you took that extra piece of fat from the pubic area just to give him a better look. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes we get in there during the surgeries and we find extra things. Uh, Commonly, we find hernias that patients didn't even know they had, so we go ahead and fix the hernia. Uh, we had one patient, I did a very large body lift. He had lost something like about 400 pounds. And uh, when we got to the pubic region, he actually had a testicular tumor that he didn't even know about. So when we get in there, we find sort of interesting things, so to speak. Those are, of course, the minority of the cases. I'd probably say less than about 5%, but nonetheless, we do find interesting things in there. And Dr. Katzen, you, um, you are able to fix these hernias, why? Yeah, so during our training uh, as plastic surgeons, we are trained during my training experience, we're also trained as general surgeons. So general surgeons do a lot of things. They do a lot of, as you'd imagine, general surgery. Uh, part of general surgery is repair of hernias. Hernias are a hole in one area that allows egress or the transit of one other area through that hole and uh, sometimes on the abdominal wall, there's a hole and a little piece of fat gets lodged in there or a little piece of small intestine gets lodged in there. And if that happens, it can twist, turn necrotic, you can get sick and you can actually even die from hernias. So that's why we like to fix hernias. So in my training and my experience, uh, I'm able and very comfortable fixing hernias. All right, great. Re in fact, when a lot of general surgeons can't fix the very large hernias, they refer to plastic surgery. So general surgery fixes the majority of the hernias, but when the hernias become too big for general surgeons to manage, then they usually refer to plastic surgeons. Why is that? Because there are a lot of planes, a lot of muscles that need to be dissected, freed up, mobilized, and then brought together and then mesh put uh, in certain places. So that's just because of training and experience. Oh, so it crosses into the plastic surgery. Yeah. Okay. And Riri said what he said about your bedside manner was so important and they agree that you have amazing bedside manner. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you.
Um, some people also say that you can't find surgeons that have amazing bedside manner and uh, that are amazing surgeons at the same time, but they find that with you. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. That's very, very kind. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us live today. And if you have any questions that we didn't answer, feel free to DM us um, yep. on this Instagram or our main page at Dr. Captain MD. Or if there's some videos you'd like me to present and comment on, DM us below. Alrighty. Happy thank Taco you. Tuesday. Happy Taco Tuesday. Thank you, Plastic Surgery. Thank you, P.S. Bye. Bye.